And so I thank all of you for joining me, especially Mike, who's in New Mexico, uh, working there and, and uh, visiting family and so forth and taking time to reach us. Are you in the same time zone in, in New Mexico as us, or are you an hour ahead of us, Mike? We're mountain time, so you're behind. we're behind. Yeah, you're behind us. All right. Well, thank you for being here. So uh, let's get started. And uh, so how's everybody doing? How, how uh, are you feeling about the class? And what's your attitude? Are, are you enjoying this? Are you putting these things into action? Um, or are you watching and kind of forgetting once you leave? Uh, which sometimes is what I've done in these kind of classes. So I, I want you to take a look at the things that we've talked about, because as, as I mentioned in the beginning, in order to have this breakthrough, in order to, uh, for Tom Ferry to deliver on his promise that what he teaches will help you be more successful and actually will put three transactions in, uh, in your pipeline by the end of this class, obviously we have to initiate some of the things that he's talked about and as many as possible. And as I told you before, I have found that people who initiate, you know, just about everything, of course, are going to have more success than others. So uh, let's just review just a little bit of what we did, what we talked about last week. So we covered last week getting a, a handle on your financial situation. What I found in my business you know, over the 30 years I've been in it, and including myself, many of us get into the business, we're overwhelmed with just passing the real estate examination, with just finding the office, with just putting things into place that we don't really take uh, the time that we need to, to think about our financial situation. So you've got session twos, um, you have the paperwork there, and it's also on our Facebook page, if you don't, if you didn't print it off. But remember, the financial situation that Tom Ferry asked you for is for you to look closely at your home financial situation, how much money you need to run your household, how much money you earn, if you have outside income, looking at all your income, and then looking at your business. So many of us go into the business and we don't think of it as a business. We think of it as, you know, it's, it's what we do, but it really is a business. And any business that's gonna be successful has to know what it costs to do business and uh, how much money they need to earn to run the business. Um, and you do too. This is Tom Oliver Incorporated. You know, this is Ken Dillard, this, you know, um, company. This, this is all about you. So if you haven't looked closely at your financial situation, please do that. I can tell you, and I might have told you in my first year in business, I found, and I didn't realize it, but I found I spent half of everything I earned to market myself. Um, that's a little extreme and over the top. I didn't expect to, but I found that it was necessary, or I thought it was necessary, to do that, you need to know what your return on investment, your ROI is on everything that you do. Secondly, we talked about how many deals, I uh, hate the word deals, how, but that's the reality of our business, how many deals you need to do each year to reach your goals, to be successful in what you do. We had on our call, at least what I wrote down, four of you, uh, had mentioned that you want uh, to do, um, let's see, seven of you said 12 transactions a year. One of you said 22. And I think uh, another one was at eight or something. So we're in that 12. We're in the 12 except for the 22 uh, and the one with four. Um, so think about how many you have to do. And then we talked about Joe Stump and Simon Sinek's several levels deep of discovering your why. And Kim was good enough to be the guinea pig for that example. And thank you, Kim, to, you know, to really be vulnerable and tell everybody what her seven levels were in, in her why. Then Tom talked about the nine-week breakthrough and the chart, 
how many days are you going to work a month? Um, how many off days are you going to have? What are you going to do in your off days? And how many appointments you need? How many showings do you need? Um, how many buyers sale? How many um, are listings do you want? And how many open houses, for example? Um, we have an opportunity was posted on our Facebook page, which I encourage everybody to go to each day, just for a few minutes to see what everyone in our office is doing so we can help one another. It's, it's really a, a place where we can go to get information on the office. I certainly don't want to be the only one on it. So the only thing you see is my goofy face and the things that I post. But there is a posting on there for the opportunity to do an open house this weekend. Look at that because open houses are a great way if you're a new agent and you're looking to get a transaction under your belt. It's a great way to do it. And, but I would encourage you, there's a right way and a wrong way to do an open house. And I, would, I will help you any way that I can to give you some ideas if you are gonna do an open house. Because you can't just walk in like most agents do. What I found is most agents show up five minutes before the open house with their signs, carrying their signs, sloppily kind of throwing signs around they get into the house maybe five minutes late. Uh, many of the guys that I've seen um, try to find the football game that's on in the fall uh, so they can watch some football while they're sitting in the open house. And they really don't think about what do I need to do to have a successful open house. So anyhow, um, we're not here to talk about open houses today. We will be in uh, a couple sessions down the road. Then we talked about the do, doing, and done board. Anybody do that yet? Did anybody put a do, doing, done thing together, whether it's on a piece of paper, on a board? Did yes. Tommy saying yes, Brittany saying yes. Really important, do the do, doing, done board. It, it's really a discovery um, many times because you don't realize what you do and what you need to do. Um, I know I get things all the time that just flash and then they're gone and I think, what. What the heck was that that I, I wanted to do? So put, it, put them down, put the things down and get used to doing it, however you do it. Paper on a computer program, whether you buy a board from Tom Ferry organization, which is a total waste of money, don't do that. Um, then are you looking and, uh, at a gratitude journal? Do you have a journal where you're putting down gratitude statements? Did you take advantage of what you see behind me which was what I sent all of you. I actually added a 10 because I added to this of attitudes, intentions, um, affirmations and goals. So all of those things. So I sent you this, if you didn't get it, please let me know, which is a 30 day plan for you to be able to mark down um, right from your computer. You can write on it from your computer. Um, those things that you're, you have gratitude for and um, what your affirmations are and intentions and goals. Okay, so those are kind of the things we touched on uh, last week. So let's move forward um, for this week. Hopefully you all downloaded or have to the side or in front of you or somewhere. Um, session number three, creating a breakthrough referral business and referral can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But Here's what we're gonna talk about, as you can see, and I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Let's see here, share, come on, share, there it is. All right, you should all be able to see the sharing of my screen. I'm just gonna move something over just a little bit. So today we're gonna to talk about talking to your database, the things that might stop you, because we all have stoppers. We all have things that get in the way that will um, stop us from doing what we know we have to do. We are gonna look at what's called the Connected Community Campaign. We're gonna look at the Coffee Meeting Campaign. We're going to touch on the Market Updates and Social Proof Campaign Plan and getting into action, how to get into action. If, um, if you did download this and print it off, you, or at least look through this, you know there's a whole gob of stuff that Tom Ferry provided you from other agents that are successful in the business. I mean, there's probably like 10 pages of different kinds of ads and things that you can, ideas you can get in your business. So that is attached to it as well. 
So this is what we're gonna to try to do today in the time that we have. We're, we're gonna to try to get clear on the right attitude to create a powerful referral business for you. We're going to try to understand what stops you from getting more referrals. And I'd love to hear what stops you so far. We're gonna learn the pattern of unique selling proposition. The pattern is pretty simple. And what I'm hoping we all do is by next week, have a unique selling proposition, okay? We're gonna maximize your referral opportunities. We're gonna create a marketing campaigns. We're gonna look at marketing campaigns, a few calling dialogues, uh, just listed, just sold card, which is in this material and a market update flyer. So Tom Ferry says, let me let someone in the room, if you want a breakthrough, you have to follow through. Uh, we probably should all go to the chalkboard right now. And if I were your teacher and I was punishing you, I'd probably have you write it down 10 times so you wouldn't ever forget this. But if you want a breakthrough, you have to follow through. And I think you all know that. We must deliver more relevant value and in multiple mediums to stay at top of mind to ultimately win the referral game, according to Tom Ferry. So let's talk about talking <coughs> to your database. And if anybody um, has a question or anything, just, just jump in and let me know. Um, so talking to your database, why agents don't talk to their database? And let's just go through it. Number one, they don't know what to say. Okay, what, what do I say when I call people that I know? What is, I, I don't know what to say. I don't want to sound silly. I don't want to waste their time. Um, number two, they haven't spoken to them in years and they are a bit embarrassed. So the blank is a bit embarrassed. I have faced that. I still face it. There's people that will come to mind that I should contact, you know, and it's easier not to call them and say, I know it's been a long time since I talked to you. You know, I'm embarrassed. Um, I'm so sorry that I haven't been in touch with you. So that's one of the reasons we don't. We have to get over that. And by calling people and saying, I didn't mean to forget you, but I wanted to call you to apologize. Just be out front. Let them know that it's on you and you want to reconnect with them. Number three, they don't want to look too salesy or desperate. That's a big one for us because many of us, although we're all salespeople, I mean, we've been selling our entire life, but you don't want to look too salesy. You don't want to be the used car salesman, so to speak, um, or you don't want to be desperate. But people don't always see you that way, but that's what we put up here. I'm not gonna make the call. I, am, I just can't because I, I am not a salesperson. I don't want to sell. I don't want to sound like one. Number four, the clients are busy and they don't want to interrupt their day. Number four is interrupt their day, okay? That's another great reason for not calling anybody. We're gonna to try to get over that. So let me ask all of you, do you have any of these reasons? Do any of these sound familiar to you? Anyone, do, do these sound familiar? It, they do because it's, it's all of us, it's all of us. And so is there an opportunity to, you know, to create more referrals? Um, go ahead and jump in, I see a hand up. Go ahead and unmute yourself and jump right in. Does somebody have their hand up for a reason? That's me, uh, Terry. Hi, Jim. Hello, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I was just raising my hand, agreeing with you, like saying, yeah, um, I've experienced that. Okay. Thank you, Terry. And, and so I think we all have. I think there could be hands all over the place. Uh, not just one hand, but both hands could go up in the air. So what is your attitude towards serving people you know? And I think you need to, uh, you just need to think about what your attitude is and how you feel about serving. The word is serving, not selling, serving the people you know. You do know if you call your database, if you call the people that you know, 
and you engage with them rather than selling to them. If you're, you know, we had a great opportunity actually with COVID, a great opportunity to connect with people authentically to ask them how they were. And it, was there anything that you could do to help their family? I did a, a campaign myself where many of the people in my database who had kids, I, I reached out to all of them and I talked to them and I said, so tell me, what are your kids doing? And, oh God, they're bored. They don't know what to do. We're going stir crazy in this house. And I asked just a couple of questions. I said, well, tell me about your kids. What, you know, you have a son, Mark, and what does Mark like to do? And they might say, well, he likes to do build models. Um, I had one person that played drums, but he didn't have any drumsticks. But I asked questions, what is it that your kids really need? What do you need to help them? And so I actually mailed to them. I sent in the mail drumsticks. I sent in the mail coloring books and crayons and colored pencils. But so I reached out to them. I was serving them. I wasn't selling anything, but I was serving them. And so with COVID, it was a, a, a terrible way to do, do this and a reason, but it gave me the opportunity to reach out for people. So I think we all need to consider our attitudes for serving the people that we know. Then ask yourself, what's your service or marketing plan to keep the people you know, let me just move this over just a little, the people you know informed on the market and connected with you. So they become empowered to refer you more business. So what's, what's your service or marketing plan to keep people you know informed? And I think most of us don't have a real marketing plan to do that. That's what we're trying to do through Breakthrough. We're trying to discover that we do need to, we need to figure out how we're going to keep people informed, not to sell them, although that you know, that comes from working with people, but to keep them in form so you can become the trusted authority for them, right? That's what we're looking to do. And number five, what do people want to know from their agent? What, what do you think people want? Well, you can circle the one you hear the most when talking to people that you know, but think about it when you're talking to them. And some of them are What's selling in my neighborhood? Most people want to know that information. They usually will go to Zillow or they'll try to find it wherever they can. But we're kind of um, interested creatures in what's happening. Maybe nosy is the right word with our neighbors and with our friends. And so what's selling in the neighborhood? Can you provide value to your database by letting them know what's selling in their neighborhood? maybe your geographical farm area, maybe their city, because you can still work with them, even though they're not here in uh, Texas, in North Texas. How much are homes selling for? Is there a trend? Well, we know and we have the information so we can tell them so they don't have to dig. So we can give them the right news, not the wrong news, you know, not the tainted news, but the news from an informed um, agent. And is there a trend? You need to read about trends and so forth every single day. I think you never, I can hear, I, I'm not sure, but mute your, if you mute your mic, Verona, and mute your mic, thank you. Um, so what are the trends? And of course, the one most people want to know, what's my homework? I'm going to do a class uh, as soon as we're done with Barry. Um, and so I can show you a method of, of doing a CMA. It's different from everybody else. So you, we can tell people what their homes were. So what other things do you think people might wanna know from their agent? Anyone just jump in. What do you think people would like to know other than these three? I'd love to hear from you. How long does it take to sell a home? Okay. If I do sell my home, what do, 
where do I go? What are the schools like in my neighborhood? What are the HOAs in the neighborhood over across the street? Anything else anyone can think about that gives you value that you can let people know? I mean, they may want to know what it takes to purchase one. Of course. Yeah. Uh, do I need to be uh, do I need to be pre-approved before I can look at homes? It's a good one, Mike. Any others? Take time to write them down. Take time to think about this because that is the value you have, you know, to, to do this. Okay, so um, one thing is, I don't know enough people. I've shared this, I think I've even talked about it, and I think I posted it on our Facebook page. I don't know if all of you've seen it, but I, I actually sent this out when I worked with Kim and I, I kind of talked with Tom about his business and so forth. The memory jogger is, is a product from Tom Ferry. And so what this does is if you don't know who to put on what I call your top 100 or your database to put in your CRM, people that you can contact, people that you can offer value to, here's a list. And some of them are things you probably haven't thought of. There's some of them, I don't even know what they are. Let me see if I can find them. Optometrist, school principal, um, Sunday school teacher, people that cut your hair, you're just a financial planner who does your taxes, um, who grooms your pets, um, who do you play golf with, who do you, you probably don't see a lot in Texas, um, who is your overnight delivery person if, you, if you're in a business where somebody's coming all the time. These are people that you know. These are people that uh, a lot of times they know you, they like you, and if they knew that you could provide them help, they would work with you. Your insurance agent. Um, and there's things you can do to partner with your insurance agent to help your clients, health insurance, your tailor, seamstress, your travel agent, if they still exist, um, the printer. We have a printer, uh, I think, right next door to us. Uh, I need to stop in there. I need to meet them and let them know what I do and that, why I'm here and what our company is all about. Um, arts and crafts. Okay, so it won't spend a lot of time, but Look at all these professions and all these different things. So you need to start getting your database. And these are all people that you can help, that you can give value to, not to sell to, but to engage and provide value to. The, the sale is the end product of all of this. Okay, so I wanna talk about, or Tom wants to talk, when you don't know what to say, the four questions to think about and learn the answers to. So your assignment, that's really important today. Um, and when we get to the end, there, there will be those things that Tom suggests that you do. Think about the problems that sellers are facing. So just let's just think about, it. I'm gonna read these four and then we'll talk about it. What problems are buyers facing? What's happening to home values? How do you as an agent solve the problems of today's buyer and seller? See, our job is to discover the problems that people have and find the solutions to those problems. That's what we do. We solve problems. So what problems are some sellers facing today? And I just open it up to ask all of you or what problems are buyers facing? Take from these four and tell me what you think the answer might be to some of these. You know, the problem with buyers today, Yeah, I've been in the middle of that. And that's why I sent an SOS out to you the other day, Jim. Yeah. You, you have got to be so nimble. These houses stay on the market for two and three days and then it's active under contract. And you have got to have, you've got to be prepared to waive appraisals. You've got to be prepared to, to mess around with your financing and talk to your lender so that you can be nimble yes, and include them because it's, it happens so quick. And I know I'm brand new. So yeah. quick to me is all relative, but you, you've got to have a firm understanding if you want to help your buyers, because this market is not going to allow for a, uh, well, I'll think about it attitude. If you want it, you better be in knowing how to get it. Yeah. I mean, the old line uh, that was used all the time it, when when I first started in business, and most of the time I've been in business, is 
we're going to sleep on it. Right. You know, we're going to sleep on it. So Jim will get back to you tomorrow because we got to think about it. And now there is no time to think. Um, the time to pray about it is before. <laughs> you know, it really is. If, if you have to pray on it, I honor that. I understand that. But prayers need to happen before. And, you know, people need to ask God to help them with the decision to make a quick decision and the right decision. And they'll be guided if, if that's their belief, if that's what they want to do. Um, so you're right. And it's, it can be very discouraging, Tom. I know and everyone that, you know, you've got a hot buyer. They want to buy something, but you just can't find it. So that's one of the problems that buyers are facing today. Sellers don't have any problem. There's, there's, there's plenty of buyers for most properties if they're priced right, if they're marketed correctly, and if they're in an area that people are interested in moving. There, there are very few problems, but buyers, multiple offers. So what I would encourage everybody to do is think about this. Think about all the problems that people have and once you have all the problems people have that you think they have, then write down what value you're going to bring to the table. Because the only reason we should get paid is because we solve the problems and we provide value. So we need to sell ourselves. We need to make sure people understand that, yeah, we get paid a lot. You know, because most people think we get paid way too much. There's no doubt about it. That's that's what most people think. And it's in the back of their mind. You know it all the time. We need to show the value that they're not expecting. You know, the refrigerator that I sent, uh, I sent by mistake to Kimberly this morning was, uh, was in a text. And I accidentally texted her. But it was important for my buyer to know the make and model of a refrigerator that will fit in the spot in the house that they're buying. They're from Maryland, so they can't come. They, they can't measure. I, I could have gone and measured, but they said, could we just see what model and make is there? Because we can, we'll look at buying the same thing. Or they could at least look at that model, get all the dimensions from it, and then buy whatever they wanted. Um, that was a problem. One of the problems my buyer had, Do am I, uh, do I have information? Am I a refrigerator salesman? What the heck is this all about? But it's one of the problems that they had. They are going to, they want a pool in her backyard. So I had to go and measure the backyard to make sure that it, it will accommodate a pool and had to let them know where there were any, there were any poles or anything in the ground or were there any utilities and so forth. So what problems do you solve? Think about, I mean, you really got to think about it because that should be what you focus on. I think you'll find, and, and I think, you know, those that have been in the business for a while, um, you know, I know Mike has and Paul, who might still be on the call. It, there are five or six major problems buyers face. You need to have the answers to those five or six every time. So you don't even have to think about it. You know, financing can be one of them. Um, Mike brought that up. That's one of the problems that buyers have. Um, so I want you to Sometimes think you'll feel like a marriage counselor and um, a divorce mediator and all kinds of different hats that will well, <laughs> feel like we're wearing. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. And a divorce you know, preventer. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah that yeah that would too it, it buying, goes, buying a home could could create tension you know between a, a couple because they oh, have different yeah they have different goals in buying a home you know different yeah. styles different floor plans different color schemes you know whatever it may be but i'd like to add something real quickly to the buyers i i've got licensed in 2007 i've been doing this for a long time i'm just now getting back into it but to uh, Tom's point earlier about being nimble, it's very true. I, I've dealt with the seller's market for many years and there's so much work that has to go in on the front end um, before even submitting an offer and preparing your buyers. And 
you have to hire tough love and they'll, they'll respect you and they'll appreciate you more if you're just very upfront and letting them know yep. um, that, you know, I think on average, a buyer loses up to three offers before they finally get an offer accepted. So you have to prepare them with even things like that and even ready to have some extra cash on hand in case they have to go above the, the listing price, which is pretty much the case nowadays. So just doing a lot of work on the front end and giving them as much information up front to prepare them on what to expect. So that way there's no surprises when, whenever it's time to submit the offer. Yeah. If yeah. that makes, makes sense, but yeah, every home is going to present a different situation, but that's, you know, this my experience with buyers. Well, you're right. You're right. Whether it was, you know, 10 or 15 years ago or today, you're, you're, I mean, the market has shifted and it's quite different today, but it's, it's the same, it's the same thing. And what I would recommend is that that conversation happens before the problem starts where you actually spend time with buyers before you take them out for them to discover all the problems they're going to have. So you can, you can actually have a crystal ball almost and say, here are the problems that most of my clients face every day. And I want you to know about what problems we may run into and how I can help you solve those problems. That's yes. what we need to do. Don't, would you agree, Pascal? No, absolutely. And I, I would even add to, to that great value there is if you have clients that are moving to the state of Texas, they, they may not be familiar, just as an example, with the type of soil that we have here, the, sh the constant shifting and foundation issues. So you, you may have to let them know that you have to accept, your, you may have to accept a property that has existing foundation problems. Mm -hmm. um, as just a, a small example, of course. You know, things like this can make a difference rather than the the spontaneous, you know, hey, by the way, this house has a foundation problem uh, when you're in like an option period or something like that, right? Or you get the seller's disclosure and you discover some mm -hmm. foundation issues. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you, you have to be ready to provide all that information up front. Just get them prepared to, to expect things, you know, to, to occur. So discovering these problems or writing all these problems down now, just like what you're discussing, discussing, these are things that can happen and how are you going to remedy it? What are you going to do? On the inspection that I had on, you know, the property I'm working on, the first property that I'm working on, uh, the chimney has some issues with the enclosure around the chimney. And I didn't know who to contact for that. So, but I should have known before that problem existed, right? So, if that comes up, I would have said, I understand, I've seen the inspection and I have a person who can take care of this for us today, right? You, you bring up a good point there, which is having a good circle of vendors, yeah. uh, contractors around you to, that you can reach at, at a you know, moment's notice to get a, a quote, for example, and sometimes providing these quotes in advance, yes. even before submitting an offer that, if you're good at what you do and you have a good eye for detail and you kind of know what to look for with some, you know, pre-owned homes and you kind of get ahead of the head of the curve with that and you say, Hey, you may encounter some issues with fireplace or with foundation. And so on average, you can look to spend, you know, some money. Yeah. X and, amount of money on this. And, and for me, the, the best uh, thing that I, I think I could say to people is um, I've been doing this for a number of years. I'm going to help you, you know, in discovering issues that uh, may be with this home that we're going to look at, but I'm but I'm not an expert on roofs. I'm right. not an expert on foundations. However, for you, um, what I found is surrounding myself around the very best in the industry is going to help us mediate all these issues. Does that sound like some? Do I sound like an agent that you would want to work with because of that? And the answer is going to be yes. Right? Of course, I think the more you can prove yourself to be a resource for your client. Yeah. Yeah. Then and, the more value you'll have with them. The deal that I'm doing now, I'm, I'm working not to um, talk down about anybody, but I'm working with Chicago title and, and compared to what I'm used to working with, they suck really bad. 
The communication is really bad and they're making me look bad. So I know the next time I'm working with a client and Chicago title is part of it, I'm not gonna talk down about them. I'm just gonna say, I just want you to know that there may be uh, more difficult communication problems with Chicago title. That's what I've experienced in the past. That's letting them know the problem before it happens. That's one of those questions that I need to learn. I've learned the answer to. They mm -hmm. just have not been satisfactory, for example. Mike, you had raised your hand a second ago. I don't know if you had something that you wanted to say or if we've gone past it or if you've frozen. Oh, no. Okay, you're good. Okay, so let me uh, share the screen once again, if I'm able to. Okay, so the next is what we want to talk about is the unique selling proposition pattern. Um, and this is so important, having a unique sell, selling proposition. Um, this is how the pattern goes. Well, you know how the problem people can relate to, okay? So you know how not receiving a phone call um, on time or someone that returns it quickly can cause issues in your life. Well, what I do is I've surrounded myself, I'm repeating myself, but there it is. I, I've surrounded myself around dependable vendors who make themselves available to give me and you quick answers so we don't have to worry as much about losing out on a property because we're waiting for an answer in this, you know, uh, in this market. Um, in close, is that something you would be interested in hearing more about? Okay, which I just alluded to. So here, here's the problem that I have. Here's what we do. And is that something you'd be interested in? Okay. Um, does anybody want to tackle this? Put an example out there. I, do, I don't want to put anybody in a corner and make them feel like they have to But, well, you know how blank. And what I do is blank. And is that something you would be interested in hearing about? Okay, Any, anybody can think of an example we can throw in there? Paul, you wanna give us one? Yeah, I'll be glad to help you out. Uh, <clears throat> well, you know how time after time again, you've seen your dream house and it disappears before you ever get to see it. What we do is we get you to the market as fast as possible with real-time data, tracking the market, looking exactly in the areas that you want to see. The result is we get you to the home that you want to see as fast as anybody or even faster, give you an opportunity to get that dream house. Would that be something you'd be interested in? So you think Paul has said this before, right? I mean, but if, if you wrote down what Paul said, it's something that you can repeat if you live to your word, if you can't do the things Paul mentioned, you don't want to, you don't want to say, I have the most sophisticated computer program in the industry. And, and because of that, I'm able to locate homes many times much quicker than most agents would be able to find them for you. Is that something that you think would be of value to you? If I'm unable to deliver that, I certainly don't want to say it. Any, does anybody else have an example? They just want to throw out off the top of their head. Anything? Okay, we're awfully shy this morning, but the point is take the unique selling proposition pattern that you see here. Well, you know how, what we do is, is that something you would be interested in? As a matter of fact, um, there's space for you when we're done, for you to create some unique selling propositions. This as, and we talked about this in our role play class, haven't we? We've talked about this. This is hugely important to you. Um, here's some examples. Well, you know how buyers today are looking to get the best price possible? Well, what I do is provide a complete profile of the home you are interested in, the tax records, previous sale price, and much more. Is that something you might be interested in. Is that something you see of value? Okay, there's a second one. There's a third one, but for time, 
They're there for you. So write out your unique selling proposition. I've had several in my business because I've done several different things. I've worked, of course, with buyers. I've worked with sellers. Haven't worked too much with investors. I bet Paul has the language that would work perfect for that. Commercial clients. I've, but I've also done other things in my life where I've actually been a coach and a trainer for new agents. So I have a different unique selling proposition for that. Okay, it might include cost of it. It might include the things that I do, how long I work with people, how often I work with people. I also, you know, wrote a book. And so I have a unique sell selling proposition for people to buy my book. And so if I'm talking to somebody in that world, I have a unique selling proposition. As a matter of fact, um, the university where I went to school has asked me to speak on that um, in the fall. So do you think I'm going to get out my unique selling proposition? It, it, heck yes. So for whatever you might be doing, it, it works for just about anything, where you, whether you're selling Avon products or selling real estate, okay? Please think about your selling proposition. Next question we I know I, I've touched on and I touch on all the time is which database or CRM should you use? We've got Boomtown, we have Promo Shop at Exit, end of story. You'd need to use the one that you're gonna use. That's what Tom Ferry says. Which one? The best one is the one you're gonna use. And in our company, you don't even have to spend a lot of money for it. Am I correct, Paul? Yeah, Jim, can I add a, a point to what you just said previously too? Yeah. Um, as we talked about these examples, we, a lot of or the questions I, or the comments I heard, for example, from Tom and from Pascal dealt with your inaction, you're, you're working with a client, you're looking at a deal and you have these challenges. But with, particularly with the theme of this even program, our idea is, is to build a pipeline of deals and to get hired in the first place. <clears throat> it's exactly the same concept, but it's important to think about it <clears throat> in the right time frame. Pardon me, I'm uh, <clears throat> fighting uh, being sick, so I'm having trouble talking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so if you anticipate what the things that the problems are that, that the people that you're going to be dealing with if you anticipate what motivates them, if you anticipate what they're afraid of, if you anticipate what they need, just the same as you would have this conversation when you're working with them, figure out how to formulate that conversation to probe for that very thing. And, and it opens the dialogue because if you, if you hit on the right thing, it will lead to a discussion, which gives you a chance then to give them your unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to realize that all of this is critical to your business development effort as well as your business fulfillment effort. Mm. And until you develop business, there's nothing to fulfill. Um, and the second point is you can't take for granted the things that we do and how important they are. This family in Maryland had no way of knowing what size refrigerator to buy. And if they ordered one online and it was the wrong size, it was a major headache. Yeah. Now, anyone, quote unquote, <clears throat> that was motivated to do so could go get that measurement for them. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have someone that is willing to do those types of things. So how do we take that concept and how do we put that into a part of our unique selling proposition before somebody even hires us? The types of things that we do that go way above and beyond what they get from Zillow, what they get from realtor.com and so forth. So I just wanna hammer that point home because the, the, the hardest part of this business is breaking through the inertia of not having things to work on. And it's this very subject matter that we're going over is, is what gives you the ammunition to be a person of interest and to be somebody that shows up as important, relevant, and a value contributor to their life. So anyways, just wanted to throw those notes in. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Paul, for, for that. Okay, so we, we talked about the CRM. We'll, we'll move along. So um, Tom has... A, a text dialogue uh, to help you. What I do, and when I've taught this class many times before, I will actually ask everyone who's in the class to take out their phones and text somebody with one of these messages. Early on, when I came into the office, we talked about this, this very one. 
I, I, you know, I remember doing it many times where you text somebody and you say, hey, Bob, the market's really moving and homes are going up, up, up. Want to know the value of your home. Okay, so here's, here's another one. Um, that's wonderful, I'll do it. Um, your text, inventory is really low. When a great home comes on the market, buyers and investors are writing offers and driving prices. Have you had any thoughts of selling? Do you know anyone who's had any thoughts of selling? These can be text messages. It can be when you pick up the phone and you don't have anything to say, um, but people wanna know. Uh, what things are selling for, what's going on. So I, I, for time, I can't do it today. I won't do it today, but please, I want you to try this. What Tom has found is what he shows here. 90% of people that you will text to today that's in your contact list. Listen, we all have phones. I, I Let's do this right now without doing a text. Um, why don't you see how many people you have in your phone? Is there a way to do that? Does, could anybody tell me how you can see how many contacts you have in your contact section of your phone? I should have prepared so I could have told you exactly how to do this. Contacts. Where does it say? Doesn't does it say? Anybody know? Well, For iPhones, know? if you yeah. scroll all the way down to the very bottom, it'll tell you your total number. Okay. So I want, you to, I want you to take the time to do that. And what a lot of people will have is 150, 200, 500, 900. Does anybody have any examples? Kim, yes. what, do you, what do you have, Kim? I have 1,171 contacts. Let me ask you something, Kim. If, Some if, of these people, I don't know who they are, but okay. go ahead. If you texted to the ones, you know, just texted to them, the market is blah, 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 blah. Would you like to know the value of your home? Whatever, there's a couple here, whatever it might be, short, sweet. Do you think maybe somebody might get back to you and say, that's interesting. Um, actually, we've thought about selling our home or, you know, we're, prob we're gonna be buying a home in the next six months. Or as soon as school is out, we're gonna be looking to relocate. Do you think those kind of things can happen by sending out a text message? Um, I'm sure it's possible. Yes. Yeah, of, course, of course it is. Anybody else have numbers? I'm going to mute out. Okay. Anyone else? I have 4,819. Paul, do you think if you reached out, reached out you might find somebody <laughs> to buy or yourself? I've actually done this. I have watched one of Tom's videos. It works. It's a great, great technique. In yeah. fact, I recommend everybody make a point, do two or three a day, every day. Yeah. Why not? What was the cost of doing that, Paul? Uh, about 15 seconds of my time. Yeah. Yep, exactly. What we're so I, I have a question. Sorry. Did, yep. I, I know that out of however many numbers you have, let's just use Paul's number, right, of 4,000. Yeah. Um, of those numbers, when you send the first message, if you don't mind scrolling to that first text example of asking if you want to know your home value, let's just say that 20% of the 4,000 don't own a home. So if you send a message specific to a what seems to be a home owner, would the recipient of the non-home owner recipient say, well, why am I receiving this text? I don't even own a home. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you create a text that can appeal to both I or seller and not necessarily this, but just as an example, to just gain some interest to say, Hey, you, you want to talk homes in general, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I definitely would find a different script. Um, that if you don't know who you're talking to, which exactly is what you're talking about, Pascal, is, is to figure out what script is universal for everybody. Okay. Which is hard to do, right? It's, 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 I'm not asking to, for it to be universal, but if you somehow have your contacts, I don't know if you're able to separate them from a 
an existing client, one you're working with, a previous or past client, buyer, seller, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, I, re I receive these text messages all the time of someone asking me if I want to refinance lo my loan. And I'm like, yeah. I don't even have a loan. I, why, so I don't even reply to these. That tells me you know nothing of me. That's right. My current situation. So it's less personable when this is supposed to be a very personable yeah. situation. And they might call you Bob. Hey, Bob. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, there's, yeah, uh, you qualify for $100,000. Uh, um, reach out so you can you can do whatever so you can buy that car or whatever it might be you so, can tell it's auto generated in other words and, and, so th somebody else have a comment please speak up I, well, if you look down at the next one there's an example down there that's pretty generic or you just get the conversation going you know you just say hey do you know you know use the inventory levels and then say do you know of anyone who has thoughts of selling okay. they may go oh well uh, we do. We were thinking about it or no, we just bought our house or something like that. And then you can jot it down in your notes or whatever the case may be. So you know that that contact is a homeowner, is not a homeowner, but that could get the conversation going in a different. Yeah, it's pretty generic. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. That's that's very good. Yeah. If you go to the first example, uh, scroll back up, if you would, please. Uh, and you say Mark's really moving. Home values are going up, up, up. Instead of wanting to know your home's value. Want to, you want to know how to take advantage of this or how to create wealth in this or what this could mean to you in, in terms of, of your home slash potential home? I mean, you, you, you could very, very easily modify this script and, and make it more generic. But, but I think the point of, and uh, was it Brittany or Kim mentioned, you can sort your contacts into groups. It's really good uh, to basically, you know, create different communications for, I call them avatars, which are representative, you know, people that are downsizers, upsizers, people with equity in their home, all the different things that we can sort from. I think it's really good that as you work your database, you keep uh, categorizing it uh, more specifically so it becomes richer and you can do more with it. For example, if I, if I get an investment deal, I have about 20 people in my database that I know can write a check and will. I, I can send the same message to those 20 people. I don't send it to 4,819 people. Yeah. I have my, my database categorized. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's getting you know step two and step three of what we're trying yeah. to accomplish here. Yeah. Uh, but the important thing is to start with the database. Yeah, yeah. What, what we're trying to do is get you out of the box, get you off the start line so you can run a race, so you have a chance. And to work, work with sweat equity, not check equity. That's what Tom teaches is we're learning. This is almost free, whatever your data costs are. This is free. And there are people that you can reach out to. And I think that's all it really requires thinking about what you want to say, what you want to try to do for somebody. What is your value proposition in the text that you're going to send out? Okay. Um, it, it just get, gets the ball moving. I know that that's the, the yeah. purpose here is to just get you out of the box, like you say, and out of the gate and start running the race, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, Let, let's move on. Thank you everybody for your participation. But again, just wanna make sure this is drilled into everyone that 90% of all people respond to a text message in under five minutes, unless they're getting repetitive ones like I send out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? But most people are gonna respond in one way uh, or several ways actually. So other ways uh, that you can move your business is on Facebook is checking in with people and the people that are your friends, family, business, people that you know, just checking on them. Um, when they post something, uh, saying hello or commenting on a post. Um, Tom Ferry recommends you spend no more than a half hour a day on Facebook in looking to build your business. But say hello to somebody, especially comment. Uh, how many of you have commented on something that you thought was really important or of interest and few people respond to it? Uh, we all have uh, because it's limited on how many people will see a post. Comment on the post. Uh, give out accolades. When you see things where other exit offices are, for example, have recruited a new agent and they introduce the agent, uh, you know, on Facebook, 
reach out to that agent. Guess what? That agent could be a referral partner at some point, whether they're in Canada or wherever they're at. I make it a point to reach out to people with a message that's different than everybody else's. Uh, there's many congratulations, great job, welcome. But, you know, I, I will even go I, beyond that. I have um, messages that I have that I can copy and paste and drop in for new agents. I want to meet them. I want them to see me and remember me because I want the referral like this client that I have uh, from Maryland. I mean, they're not my client, it was a referral. Um, and it came from um, an agent in Maryland that I've worked with before and met. Okay, this one is, is big and we only have a couple minutes. If you have to leave, I understand. I apologize, I've been too wordy, but the coffee meeting plan. I think I might've told you or gave you an introduction uh, at least on one of the calls last week that I had a campaign that I did years ago and I, I reached out to 1400 real estate agents in my, in my community, uh, in my MLS. There were 1400 agents. I reached out to 1400 agents. This is what I found. I reached out with a phone call not to, and I told them, I'm not calling you to recruit you. I'm calling because I really want to meet you. And I want to tell you a few things that are working for me. And I'd love to hear things that are working for you. And I'd really like to meet with, with you. So when we do do a transaction together, we'll have familiarity. We'll know each other. And I found it's so much easier to work with somebody that you know and you know can put a name to a face than just reaching out like most agents do that's usually by email or another way. When would be a good time? I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. Uh, and let's meet at Barnes and Noble. When, when would be a good time for you? Of the 1400 I call, I set appointments for half. Half said yes. Half said, you know, basically, I don't wanna talk to you or didn't return my call because you're gonna recruit me. And of course I made sure to tell them, this is not to, I just wanna meet you so we can maybe work together. You can do the same thing while there's uh, 22,000 agents here, whatever that number is, it's, it can be overwhelming, but it could be in your geographical area where you're at. And so basically I just met them. It cost me about $6 per person by the time I got there, spent no more than a half hour. Some of them went two hours, but I had to space them out. Uh, for a half hour, actually, I gave myself 40, an extra 15 minutes. So when the next person came in, I, I was sitting alone and I could meet them. So I was very on the job. So think about coffee meetings for, that was real estate agents. How about coffee meetings with people that you know, or people on parents on the baseball team or the football team, people in your church? You know, I've, I've watched you uh, in the choir and admire how you lead the congregation uh, in song. Uh, you know, I'm a musician too. I would just love to meet you and hear how you learn to sing so beautifully. Is there a time we could just meet? And uh, I don't think it's too, it's stalking. If it's somebody that it's in your congregation, for example, or clubs. So think about people that you would like to meet because those can turn into a transaction because all of them will say, you know, you're going to ask them. So tell me about you. What do you do? Guess what they're probably going to ask you? What do you do? And it gives you the chance to go to your unique selling proposition to say, well, what I do is I help buyers and sellers find the perfect property um, in the shortest amount of time and uh, make it as enjoyable as possible, whatever your USP is. Okay. So coffee meetings are something to think about. Okay, um, getting into action. So here's just a few things and then I'll let you guys go uh, is to getting into action. First of all, if, if you're gonna get into action, send five text me messages today. Make, do it today. Just do it today, do it every day. God, if you have 4,000, I don't think most of us do, um, you're gonna die before you get to them all. <laughs> it's just a fact, you're not gonna, that's a lot. Reach out to every single day. You've got to talk to people. If you're not talking to anybody, you're going to have a heck of a time making it into business. So 
Your assignment is to send five calls uh, or five text messages um, in your hour of power. Number two, spend 30 minutes every evening because um, it's your off time. You can be with your family, you can be watching TV, but you can have you know, your computer on or, or your phone on. Spend 30 minutes on Facebook and engage with people you know. Number three, um, go to th uh, three coffee meetings this week. Set meetings up. You won't die, I promise. And you'll actually learn something about people and maybe um, find that you have something in common that you can enjoy together. Next is send out uh, one or two beautiful emails to people, okay? Tell them that, that you admire them. If you see an article in the paper of something that they've accomplished, a wedding anniversary, a birthday, whatever, reach out and send one or two um, cards, beautiful emails or cards, um, whatever. And number five, do a minimum of one mailer a month one mailer a month. Now for me, it's to the, my geographical farm. And I found that in order to really connect with a, a geographical farm, you, for me, had to do it every month. It generally takes nine months before you see any real results from doing that. We'll talk more about geographical farms later. So there's your action steps. Get your do doing done board, get it done. Schedule one hour to learn your CRM. You know, there's uh, Tammy that sent me uh, whatever I needed to do to learn how to use Boomtown. She sent it to me. They have courses online. It costs nothing. It'll teach you what to do. It's the same with Dotloop. You, there's free classes and learn how to, to work with Dotloop. But for your CRM, you've got one with uh, Boomtown. And if you have, I know like a couple agents that have promo shop with Exit Corporate, use that one, okay? Schedule your hours of power and track results. Decide who you will invite to coffee. Do you have anybody in mind, Tom, that you might invite to coffee? Anybody that you could think of that you would like to know more about without being salesy? Yeah, I've got a few people as easy that I can think of. So yeah. it's just scheduling the time to do that, which has to become some sort of a habit because otherwise I won't do it. Well, so what if on your calendar, on, you know, if you're working five days a week, you know that from, you know, seven to eight, you're doing this from eight to eight 30, you're doing this, whatever it might be. Remember what I've told some of you, I did expired five days a week, every morning from nine to noon. That's the time I took to work expires every day during the work week, five a day, um, every, uh, excuse me, three a day. I don't want to exaggerate it. I did three a day for three hours. I dedicated that time, okay? So I knew if I did three, it was 15 a week. It was 60 a month. It was 720 a year. That one activity that I dedicated to my calendar was the, the pathway to my success. Because if you talk to 720 people, you get really good about what you're talking about. I was really good at being able to talk about it. I sucked at first, it was awful. You know, I, I just fumbled over words, slobbered, I, you know, it was all, it was bad. But each time you do it, you get better. And so I knew I was gonna talk to 720 people a, a year. And my goal was to get 12 listings a year, just from that one, three hour, every day, five days a week, not Saturdays or Sundays. That's what I did. That's something you can put on a calendar and you can dedicate it to. It doesn't have to be expired. It could be knocking doors. It could be working your geographical farm. Whatever it is, Tom, it's hard. But if it's on a calendar and you look at it every day, either you're going to go, uh, I'm not going to do it today and pass. But I think if you have it on your calendar, you're going to get tired of seeing it on your calendar and not living up to, to yourself and your own goals. Okay. And I'm not picking on whomever, right, that, that would do this. Okay. And then decide if you do a mail campaign, how you're going to do it and how you're going to reach out to people. So I've gone seven minutes over. There's a bunch of dialogue on here as well. There's a door knocking script. There's other scripts. There's examples of ads that you could do if you want to do ads. Here's a, a door hanger type of thing. 
You know, if you're going to walk a neighborhood, leave behind something unless they don't, um, that neighborhood doesn't allow door hangers or flyers in the doors. You want to make sure you know because you don't want necessarily to get called and screamed at. I have, and guess what? It's, it's for me, it was better to ask for forgiveness uh, than for permission. Um, not necessarily the right way to go for everybody. You know, things on uh, the local market and so forth. So there's all kinds of stuff here for you guys to consume and for you to take advantage of. So we're eight minutes over. I'll try to do better to stay with one hour, but um, I want to open this up to any questions anybody might have. And if for those that might not be engaged, I'll, I'll try to engage. Hi, Jim, um, could you send me the emails? Um, because I haven't been getting any. Yes. So or the book that you sent out to everyone. This is yeah. yeah, and I, I apologize. This is Terry, right? Is this Terry or? Oh, oh. Hello? I will, yeah, I will do that today. I'm sorry, I'm uh, I'll kind of uh, consumed with the own office, but I will do that. I promised you I would, and I will. Thank you for asking. I'll make sure I get it to you. Yeah, I just yeah, I just took off today because um, I'm I'm waiting for I was waiting for delivery, so okay. I'm usually. I'll get it done for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else? Anybody else have any comments for the good of the order? I'd love to hear from you. Helpful, not helpful, worth your time today. I think this is a little bitty Still building block. Yes. That, that's what we're doing. Yes, we're, we're doing it just a, a little bit at a time over 10 weeks. And if you do these things, I promise you, you're going to have success. Okay. You will be talking to people. We got to talk to people, everyone. All right. Anything else? Jim, a little finesse to the coffee meeting. Uh, and one of the ways to drive yourself to do it is go out. And so you set a goal. I'm going to do this this month and I'm going to do three a week. So uh, I know that that's going to mean I'm going to do uh, 12 meetings. Go to Starbucks and buy 12 $5 gift cards and, and get yourself a stack of thank you notes, exit thank you notes with your business stuff on it. And after the, at the beginning of the coffee meeting, say, hey, Jim, what are you drinking? And Jim says, I'm drinking that unleaded coffee macchiato with whatever in it. And you go and you buy that. But you make a little note to yourself. And after the coffee meeting, you take that $5 gift card and a thank you note. You hand write and say, hey, Jim, I really appreciate the fact that you afforded me the 15 minutes or the, the time to get together. And what I learned about this is said uh, next coffee, unleaded coffee macchiato is on me. You stick the $5 gift card and you mail it to them. It gives you a personal touch. It shows that you paid attention to what they want or what they need, which, which, which separates you from most people. It, it really, it's really important. And it, and it also, sometimes it prompts that next phone call. Uh, and so anyways, it, just a way to do that. And, and I find it's very effective and I, I enjoy doing that as well. It's kind of fun. Yeah, well, and it, like you said, and of course you can follow up, you know, four days afterwards and, or a week, two weeks afterwards, and say, uh, hey, Mark, did you receive the coffee card? I want to make sure you got it because I'm looking forward to the next time we get together. Yeah. There's the call. And Mark might say, you know, I've been thinking, you know, you said something about, you know, the property that you bought and, and some of the problems that you had moving to Texas and so forth. Now, I would really like to talk about my next move and whatever the conversation might be. Okay. Thank you, Paul. That's good. Anyone else? That was excellent, Paul. Thank you for personal no notes are so awesome because I'll ask all of you, how many personal notes have you gotten in the last few weeks? Other than Kim's birthday, by the way, which was yesterday. Was it your birthday, Kim? Yeah. Okay. So it was her birthday. Um, 31. I think she was 31. Right. Um, so yeah. Happy birthday. Um, yeah. I think, should we all sing happy birthday to Kim? <laughs> do it. Everybody on mute, just on mute, do it. Come on, I'm, I'm looking, we're all gonna sing it. Uh, I'll lead it, okay? I don't have, a, I used to be really good. I used to sing well, but I really, I'm bad. We'll just um, sing loud. Hello, Jim. Yes. Hey, sorry to interrupt, this is Terry. Well, it, while we're singing happy birthday, y'all sing happy birthday to me too. Mine's was the 10th. Well, there you go. Oh, happy oh, birthday, wow. Terry. 
<laughs> Thanks, you too. Okay, so uh, Kim, you can get your kids, they can sing if they want. Um, get your kids over to the screen. Let's bring everybody in. We know they'll sing, we just know it. Come on, everybody's got a couple minutes, so we'll just wait for the kids. Yay! Yay! What? See, oh, there we go. Okay. Yay! Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, we're going to sing oh, happy I birthday think. to Teresa. Yeah. I think it's Teresa and Kim. Okay, so is everybody ready? Here we go. Yeah. Her name's happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear Terry. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Kim. I bet you've never had happy birthday on on a Zoom call. No, I haven't. Thank you. You got to be an exit in order <laughs> to. Is that where Kelly got you? No. Hey, hey, everybody! Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and thank I, you. I enjoy these calls a lot, and I appreciate that you're with me. So we'll be back. I'll be back on Tuesday with scripts and role play. And we'll be back Thursday with number four, Tom Ferry. I'll let everybody go. Thank you for allowing me to go over. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a good day.